Hello everyone, and in this video, we are going to be talking about steam tables. And so there are two types. There are saturated as well as superheated steam tables. We're going to go over the difference and we're going to look up how to understand what these tables mean because there's a ton of numbers and it can be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to do my best in this video to walk you guys through it. And so with that, we'll get started. So the key thing that I'm going to make note of here is I'm going to have this little control volume on my right. This is a closed system and I'm going to fill this with some water and I'm going to light a little flame here, basically gonna add some energy into this system as a terrible flame, but we get the point. Um, and to make this a little bit more specific here, I'll just add in heat to my system, so Q. And so I'm gonna heat this thing up. I'm gonna keep adding heat. We're gonna make this water start to boil. We're gonna keep adding water. And eventually at some point, this system that was once liquid water, so I'm gonna stop heating this right now. This system that was once just liquid is now going to exist as some vapor and liquid and it's going to have some temperature and a pressure and so i'm going to want to know the properties of this specific system so now instead of having that much water i'm going to have a little bit less water and i'm going to have some water vapor that i'll kind of draw like that um, and so we've got vapor which is really just steam and then we've got liquid which we know is good old water and so the key thing that I want to make note of here is that this is what we're going to call a saturated control volume. And by saturated, it means that we've got vapor and liquid existing in this kind of vapor liquid equilibrium, VLE, something you're going to see a lot of. Um, and so basically with these VLE systems and these closed control volumes, there are two tuning parameters at our disposal. There is going to be some pressure associated with this system, and I'll use a different color for this. There's going to be some temperature associated with this system as well. And so the thing to make note of is that inside of this control volume, with a saturated system, I can choose to either set the pressure or the temperature and by setting one of those things, I will have fully defined the system. And so because of that unique property, we have saturated steam tables. And so specifically, this guy right here, the first graph we have, is what we call a saturated steam table. So if I told you, hey, I've got this system of saturated steam and it's at five bar, what that means is that its temperature must be 151.83, and I will also know other thermodynamic properties, namely specific volume. I'll know its internal energy, which is U, and I'll also know its enthalpy, specific enthalpy. And so this specific term that we throw around a lot, it really just means on a per mass basis. So that's the reason why you see all these terms being per kilogram. Um, sometimes you might also see it being per mole, and if that is, you're going to need to use the molar mass to convert. Um, but that is what specific refers to, and the key things to note here is that we've fully defined our system only knowing either the pressure or the temperature. If I came to you another day and I said, hey, I know that I have some saturated steam and it's at 212.38 degrees Celsius, can you tell me what its internal energy is? You can say sure, and so basically all you do is read across right to here, and you're gonna note how you've got two values to pick from. And so that's because you've got a system at vapor liquid equilibrium, which means you've got a liquid, which is that water part, and you've also got a vapor, which is this steam part. And so these both have their own unique internal energy values. And so you're gonna have to say, you're gonna have to be a little bit more specific. Um, but that is how you read and interpret a saturated steam table. So that is how simple it is. And I wanna make note of again, how nice it is that I only need to tell you one of these things to fully define the thermodynamic properties of this system. Now, as you say, you know, I'm gonna keep adding some more heat to this thing. So let's keep putting in more Q. And I'm sorry that's off the page, but you know, we're adding more and more heat to our system. What's gonna happen is we're gonna lose all the liquid. So that guy's gonna go away. And as we continue to add in more and more heat, the only thing that's gonna exist here is that vapor phase. And so all those nice things are gonna start disappearing. And so now we're gonna have 
a pressure associated with our superheated steam, as well as a temperature associated with our superheated steam. And for us to fully define our system, we will need to know both the pressure and the temperature simultaneously to understand what the specific volume, uh, specific internal energy, and specific enthalpy of the system is. And that's where you're gonna turn to superheated steam tables. And so with superheated steam tables, it's a slightly different story um, in the sense that you can see now how we don't just care about looking across a row, we also have to look across a column. And so in this case, if I said, hey, I've got some superheated steam, it's at five bars, and I know that the temperature is at 500 degrees Celsius, then you can say, you can tell me either any of these three things, you have to, they all will be the same um, or specified, um, but you will know that the specific enthalpy for your steam, so superheated steam, at 500 degrees Celsius and five bar. Uh, and you're gonna know that it's specific enthalpy is going to have to be 3484.5. And this is kilojoules per kilogram. So it's that specific part coming again. Um, so basically that's how you're gonna use a superheated steam table. We can do another little example here. If I said, hey, I've got some superheated steam, it's at 400 degrees Celsius and 50 bar. Well, you're literally just gonna look across here and I wanna know what its enthalpy is. Um, and so we're gonna make note of that that value is 3,196.7 kilojoules per kilogram. Um, so that is how you do this. You do have to know both the pressure and the temperature to know what the thermodynamic properties of that specific system are in order to define it. Um, so that is the key thing to take away here. Now. Um, I'm going to wrap things up with that as an introduction. I'll walk through an example problem where we can begin to do some energy balances to determine how big of a heat exchanger we might need for sizing a unit and a chemical process. But for the sake of introducing this stuff, I'm going to wrap things up with that. Hope this is helpful. Thank you all for watching. and I'll talk to you guys next time.